Hi, welcome to English class. Once again, we're doing our Narnia series uh, here at the Potter's House Christian Church, La Casa del Alfarero, in San Jose, California. I'm Peter Williams Garcia, here uh, leading you all in, as we explore and learn English. Um, uh, before we get started, I just want to remind you, this is a Christian church. Um, we are here to, to spread the gospel, to spread the news of Jesus, that He is the only way um, to, to know the Father, to know God, so that He can change your life. And that's what God wants for you. The greatest miracle is the forgiveness of sins, and that's only through Jesus. If you want to be free from your sins, look to Jesus. We just wanted to share that message with you before we get started. Um, and without further ado, um, we are in our Narnia series. We are reading The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, and uh, yeah, so... Uh, the resources that we have for you, we we got our text from this online um, this online source. It is a free e version of the text. It also includes two audio um, options, so you could it could you could listen to it um, as well. Um, we try and uh, manage between beginning and intermediate English. Um, this time around, I'll probably be speaking more Spanish. Um, just by uh, the feedback we got, we're going to try and, and slow it down. I'll be speaking a bit more Spanish. Um, and with that, thank you to all our viewers who send in our comments. We have one uh, uh, sister from, the, from our sister church, uh, our daughter church, sorry, in uh, Sacramento, Sister Vanessa. Thank you so much for your, your, uh, your kind uh, um, notes and, and, and helpful insight. We're definitely trying to improve and we appreciate all of your help. Anyone out there, if you're watching right now, this is a live format, like uh, I, I was going to say. Um, so there is a live chat. Feel free to chat in, in there. And we have our technical team, Marcos, over there. He'll be monitoring and he'll let us know if there are any questions. So, uh, like I said, resources. There is that online resources. Uh, there is that online resource where you can read it yourself. Um, I do encourage you, after you've watched this video, we've read it together, you go back, you go on online, and you read it uh, again by yourself, or you can click that audio section. There, like I said, there's two sections, one in fast English, one in normal English. So you can uh, watch either, e uh, so you can read either one. Um, secondly, I, we're going to leave in, in the description box later. You'll see it on the screen www.wordreference.com. This is a recommended um, uh, translator or online dictionary. It has many languages, but of course, if you are watching, you're a Spanish speaker, you can do English or Spanish, Spanish to English. And while we are going to be helping out with some vocabulary in today's lesson, um, if we, I may not know every word that you do not know. So uh, you can, I encourage you to write down words that you hear, that you see on the screen while we're reading today's uh, chapter. And write down words you don't know. And later, you can look it up. You can look at the translation. Then go back to the book. Go back to this video and um, see where it was in the context. And, and you'll learn a lot that way. So I highly encourage you to do that. Create your own vocab list as you go. And lastly, uh, my email is on the screen. Feel free to email me. Um, uh, that is my personal email address. So please don't spam me. Uh, but uh, you can use that to reach out to me with any of your questions. Also, I understand we have some... Um, uh, viewers in Mexico, I want to say hello to you, our international audience. You're very welcome. Uh, we are here to serve everyone across the world. Um, and yeah, so uh, without further ado, we are going to get started. Um, how's the live, live chat going? I'm going to make it a habit of checking in. No views? Oh. <laughs> I'm sure that'll change shortly. All right, let's go ahead. <laughs> Hey, if we want this video to be viral, we have to have a little bit of humor, right? I know. I realize that. And we have to make jokes. <laughs> All right. So, before we start reading, uh, antes que leamos eh, eh, el capítulo, we want to prepare you. And so today's chapter, I wanted to prepare us in a specific way. Every chapter will have a different angle, different thing that we're focusing on. Cada capítulo va a tener algo específico que estamos uh, enfocando por este capítulo. Y, and, and this time, we are looking at asking questions. So, in other words, in Spanish, preguntando preguntas, right? How do you ask questions in English? Um, and like any language, there are usually a couple ways to do it. So in English, we have multiple ways. Uh, you'll see them on the screen on the, on the slideshow. Um, within those... You could, you could do combinations, and so let's look at that. So the first one that we have on, on, the, on the list is inverting pronoun verb. It's something unique. Um, you'll see it in some Latin languages. I know in Spanish, you actually do not 
use the inversion of pronoun and, 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 and verb to, um, to, to make a question. Um, but in English, you do. So be careful. Whenever you do see that inverted, um, that inverted pronoun uh, and, and, and verb, uh, it is a question. So for instance, are you American? It is Americano, right? So I'm asking a question. Are you American? Um, if I say, are you American? I cannot say that as a statement. No lo puedo uh, uh, utilizar como un, una declaración, no? I, I can't say, eres Americano? Are you American? Are you American is because I switched, yo, cam yo cambié en lugar de, de, del, del nombre y el sujeto, uh, sorry, perdón, el sujeto y, y, el, uh, y el verbo, uh, it is now a question. So once you switch it, it's a question. So you are American is a statement. Uh, so declaración. You are American. Are you American is a question. Okay. The second thing is tone and inflection. Now, tone and inflection in English is not mandatory, but you should say use it, right? Because it's, it's more natural. This is the, the natural way of asking a question is you inflect and you put uh, on, on the last the last uh, word in the in the in the question. Um, so you should be doing that with every question, but in English, technically, do not need it. So if I say, are you American? I didn't really put inflection at the end, but it's suggested because it's more natural. Are you American? Right? So it is, um, it is not mandatory, but it's natural to do. Right? Um, I could use, however, inflection to um, turn a, a, a statement into a question. Right? So you'll see that um, throughout uh, this novel, there sometimes there'll be questions that are not necessarily in a quote unquote question format, but the inflection, you'll see a question mark. Um, that question mark implies inflection, which makes it a question. Right? So to recap, the inflection is not mandatory in the question when you're speaking uh, uh, if there is uh, a format indicating that, if that makes sense. And we'll see examples of this, so, so don't worry about that. Um, Third one is using the helping verb. So many, many verbs in English can have this extra verb to do in front of it to make it a question. Um, and like I said, we're going to see this in the, in, the, in the novel. So I'm just kind of recapping or reviewing what these, what these are. And then we'll see them throughout the, throughout the reading. Question words. Um, so anytime you put a question word in front or even at the end of a, of a question, it makes it a question. So that's pretty straightforward. You have who, what, when, where, why, how. Um, and there are a few other ones that are like combinations. Um, so you'll find those in questions as well. Uh, and obviously, you can add those two questions to make them more descriptive, right? I'm not just asking. Uh, I may not know. For, let me back up. So the example we had earlier was, are you American? Let's say I don't, I, I don't want to make it a binary question, right? No lo quiero tomar como una pregunta binaria. Uh, cuando hay dos opciones, I want to ask descriptively, right? So I could use um, uh, where, right? Donde in, in Spanish would be where in English. Um, so where are you from? Instead of uh, uh, just having are you American, right? So you can see that the first example we had, it's binary. It's a yes or no question. This time, uh, we are adding a word where, which makes it more descriptive. It makes it there's more options in the answer. La respuesta tiene más opciones ahora, uh, en otras palabras. Um, the last one is uh, using the perfect present. You'll see this a lot with questions. The perfect present is used to ask a question. It's like, have you done this? Right? Yes, I did this. Right? So that's just a quick example of the perfect present. We talked about the perfect present in the last couple of videos. Um, so you can go back and if you have more questions about how that works in grammar, because it's not only for questions, obviously. There are plenty of other uses of the, of the perfect present. Go back and look at those videos. I encourage you to do that. Te animo a regresar a otros videos que, que, que hablan de, del presente perfecto. And jump right into it. Um, we are now on chapter two, Lucy. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a typo on the screen. Uh, <laughs> chapter two, this time is Lucy investigates what is in, no, no, wait, Lucy, wait, okay, I, I, I don't remember what the, <laughs> ah, this is going to be an interesting video, I can tell, all right, um, the, the, the title is incorrect on the screen, I don't remember what the title is, uh, let's just <laughs> begin chapter two, right, capítulo dos, de León, eh, el, el, la bruja y el armario, the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe, 
Disclaimer, I am not an actor. I will not try to. I am here to read it with you and help explain anything. Also, you'll see uh, in blue and in bold, you'll see um, in a, vas a ver algunas oraciones eh, escritas que están um, puesto en azul y, y, y negrita, uh, in bold. And that's there to highlight the questions. So you can see those and we'll talk about them as we go. All right, ready? We're ready. All right. Okay, so chapter two. Good evening, said Lucy. The fawn was so busy picking up its parcels that at first it did not reply. When it had finished, it made her a little bow. In other words, he bowed, right? He bowed slightly. He did a little bow. He in, but the, the writer is saying uh, it made her a little bow. Uh, but just know that that's the same thing as saying he, he bowed. All right. Good evening, good evening, said the phone. Excuse me, I don't want to be inquisitive, but should I be right in thinking that you are a daughter of Eve? Um, and we put in bold the word inquisitive. That is a, uh, a vocab word for this chapter. Uh, inquisitive is another word of saying curious. Um, in, in Spanish, it's very similar in inquisitivo or curioso. Those are all synonyms. And then we have our first question of the, of, the, of the chapter, and is, but should I be right in thinking that you are a daughter of Eve? So this is a, uh, a, um, a uh, complicated sentence, you could say, but uh, the, the tool that it's using, the, the format that it's using to make it a question is the inversion. So the first option we looked at, and the verb and the subject would be I and should, right? So should I. As soon as you see that the verb is in front of the pronoun, uh, I and should, it's switched, should I, it is a question, right? In English, it has to be. There's no other way. So, and you'll see there's a question mark at the end, right? So let's move on. My name's Lucy, she said, not quite understanding him. But you are, forgive me, you are what they call a girl? Asked the fawn. Um, and here we see, uh, you'll note that it's no longer inverted, right? So this time it's just the subject and the verb, you are. Right, so he said, but you are, forgive me, you are, right, you are. Um, and he says, what they call. So what you could say is a, is a question word, so that's put in there, so it helps you indicate that, it helps show uh, that it is a question. So you are what they call a girl, and you have inflection at the end again, because like I said, that almost always happens naturally when you're saying a question. So to repeat, but you are, forgive me, you are what they call a girl, asked the fawn. Of course I'm a girl, said Lucy. You are, in fact, human. And here you see just pure inflection making it a question, right? That's very interesting. So he says, you are in fact a human, right? So if I said, you are in fact a human, eres de hecho un humano, in Spanish you would have to put inflection to make it a question, right? Same thing in this sentence because there's no other words or, or, or formatting that makes it a, a, a question. So you are in fact a human. If I say, you are in fact a human, notice my voice, I'm not putting tone at the end. He's making a statement. But because it has a question mark, I'm going to read it like, you are, in fact, a human. And that inflection is key. Ese tono, esa inflexión es muy importante en inglés. Y igual como en español, um, en, en este caso, solo en inglés, en inglés, en este caso es muy importante porque eh, no hay algún eh, formato en, en esta oración para enseñar que, que sea un, una pregunta. All right, moving on. Of course I'm human, said Lucy, still a little puzzled. And the word puzzled, uh, comes from the word puzzle, right? But this time it's, it's in a verb form. Ahora esta palabra está en, el, en, el ver, en, en la forma de un verbo, eh, una acción, and it's puzzled, right? It's a past preterite, it's in the simple past. Um, and it comes from the word puzzle, like I said. So when you have a puzzle, in Spanish, rompecabezas, puzzle is uh, something difficult, right? Um, do I need to pause? We have a comment. It says, Oh, we have a comment. Chapter is what Lucy found there. Beautiful. Thank you. Is that Sister uh, Vanessa? Yes. Awesome. Thank you, Vanessa. I knew you'd know. Thank you so much. All right. So, uh, yeah. So, we are in the chapter two, which is, and what Lucy found there. Right? Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I knew I had it somewhere in my mind, you know, but <laughs> what are you going to do when you're on the spot on live? You get a little nervous. And then, <laughs> okay. All right. So, we were talking about the word puzzled. Um, this is a past preterite, um, which uh, makes it uh, work as an adjective. So puzzled. You get the, the noun, puzzle, which as you know, a puzzle is like, is like a toy, it's a game, but it's something that you have to work at, right? In Spanish, like I can say rompecabezas. 
I love the Spanish word for this because rompe cabezas is like you're hurting your head, you know. Um, so that that's what's happening here. She's a little puzzled. When you say someone is puzzled, um, in Spanish you could say perplejo. It would be a good example, a good um, uh, a translation because it's something that you're perplexed by, you're confused by, etc. Okay, so to repeat that sentence. Of course I'm human, said Lucy, still a little puzzled. To be sure, to be sure, said the fawn. How stupid of me. But I've never seen a son of Adam or a daughter of Eve before. I am delighted. This is to, that is to say, and then it stopped as if it had been going to say something it had not intended, but had remembered in time. Delighted, delighted, it went on. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Thomas. I am very pleased to meet you, Mr. Thomas, said Lucy. And may I ask, O oh, Lucy, daughter of Eve, said Mr. Thomas, how you have come into Narnia. We have another question, right? How you have come into Narnia. Here you have no inflection, uh, but, y sorry, sorry, you do have, well, y you don't have any inversion, so you don't have no sw switching of words. No hay cambiar de, de, de verbos, de palabras, pero existe esa palabra, esa palabra, como, or how in English, right? So in Spanish, we como is como has venido a Narnia, is uh, la traducción de es, es, esta oración. How have you come into Narnia um, is the question. So we know it's a question, um, A, because there's a question mark. Second, because, B, I should say, because of the word how. So the, the how, the word how is indicating, helping you give a hint, una pista, que sea una pregunta. Okay, um, any comments? No? Okay, sorry, thought I saw a hand over there. All right, and then Lucy replies to this. So he asks, how you, how you have come into Narnia? Narnia? What's that? Here you see two questions. Both of them are pure inflection, right? Esa es pura inflexión. Es como en español. Tiene que tener ese tono, right? Narnia? Or Narnia? <laughs> what's that? Right? So there has to be inflection. Otherwise, uh, uh, in the first one, sorry. In the second one, there's an extra word which helps indicate that there is a question, right? And that is the word what, right? In Spanish, it should be que with, con un acento. So, there's two questions here. One is just one word, so it's hard. You have to put inflection there. Narnia, right? It's a question. What's that? Here we have the word what is that, right? So the word what is a question word, and that's helping indicate. Said Lucy. This is the land of Narnia, said the fawn. Where we are now, all that lies between the lamp post and the great castle of Caraparavel of the Eastern Sea. And I do want to point out here, you have a question, what would be a question word, right? The word where. We saw that in the last, uh, in the last uh, page. Um, the word where in Spanish, donde. But in English, it's not always going to mean a question. So you have to be careful. You have to look for other indicators, right? Question words can be statements of facts. Where we are now. Donde estamos hoy. No es una pregunta, es una declaración. Donde estamos. El, el, el lugar donde, donde, nos, eh, donde nos encontramos eh, is, the, eh, is what's happening here. You're having a statement of fact. Where are we now? So just keep that in mind. So don't think that just because it says where, he's asking a question. That's not the case. So when you're reading, at least, look for question marks. <laughs> It'll be the best case. But within a sentence, you can have the word where. Um, you can have where and an inversion. You can have combinations of, of the different sets that we talked about. Um, but yeah, so just keep that in mind that also the question words can become statements of fact, depending on how they're used in a sentence. And you, you have come from the wild woods of the West. And here we have pure inflection, right? Because you have come from the wild woods of the West could be a statement of fact. In this case, it's not, right? Because there's a question mark at the end. And, that, and he's always asking a question. So the way you would read it is, you have come from the wild woods of the West. You have to have a tone at the end. So when they refer to characters being daughter of Eve or son of Adam, they're referring to them being human, right? Yes, good question. Um, C.S. Lewis used uh, that terminology. It, it is a biblical reference. It's, a, it's una referencia a la Biblia. Daughter of Eve, hija de Eva. A and then she, uh, he also mentions son of Adam for the males. Um, so para los varones, y, eh, va, va a decir en, 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 eh, en Narnia, uh, hijo de, de Adam. Son referencias, como dije, a la Biblia. They are references to the Bible. Um, 
there's a whole like lore and legend within Narnia <laughs> about why they use those terms. Uh, you have to keep in mind that humans uh, were not intended to be in Narnia. Well, they were theoretically the plan of, of God, right, for humans to go into Narnia, but they weren't creatures made for Narnia. That makes They weren't made in Narnia. They weren't creatures of Narnia. They were always foreigners, right? So what happened in, in we'll read this book later. I don't want to spoil it. Ah, I shouldn't spoil it. No, we're going to read eventually the magician's uh, nephew, and it explains the origin story of how humans came to Narnia. We'll look at it later. Vamos a leer este, este libro uh, uh, luego. Hoy no. Uh, and, and we're going to explore that later. So, um, Any other comments? No? All right, let's go ahead and continue. I, I got in through the wardrobe in the spare room, said Lucy. Ah, said Mr. Tumnus in a rather melancholy voice. And the word melancholy is a synonym for like sad or, or a little down yeah, in his attitude, right? He's a little sad. Um, in Spanish, the word is very similar, melancólico, it would be in Spanish. Um, so just a new, new word uh, for you to learn in a rather melancholy voice. If only I had worked harder at geography when I was a little fawn. I should no doubt know all about those strange countries. It is too late now. But they aren't countries at all, said Lucy, almost laughing. It's only just back there, at least I'm not sure. It is summer there. Meanwhile, said Mr. Thomas, it is winter here and has been forever so long. And we shall both catch cold if we stand here talking in the snow. Um, catch a cold, or catch cold, is a way of saying to get sick, but it's a way of saying to coger enfermedad. Lo diría así en inglés. Catch cold, right? Coger enfermedad o enfermarse por estar afuera. Es lo que está diciendo aquí. We shall both catch cold if we stand here talking in the snow. Daughter of Eve from the far land of Spare Um, where eternal summer reigns around the bright city of Wardrobe, how would it be if you came and had tea with me? And I like this, this line, it's very poetic because uh, it rhymes, right? Um, but it, it's a question, right? How would it be if you came and had tea with me? This is a combination of a question word, so you have a question word, and you have a uh, inflection. So the the subject in the sentence, el sujeto en, ese, eh, eh, en esta oración, is it, right? So it's, and then would, uh, we'll look at conditional later uh, in, in our English class, um, but this is a conditional verb, just know that. Nota que es un verbo condicional, would, and it's the conditional of to be. So, how would it be if you came and had tea with me? So, how, so uh, we looked at the word how earlier, so como. Uh, and, and that's how you know it's a question, right? How would it be? So you have a combination of two things. You have the question word, how, uh, and you have the inflection. Sorry, sorry, the, the, you have an inflection here. You do have an inflection, that's true. Um, in, within the sentence, though, you have the, the, the question word, and you have the um, uh, inversion. Sorry, that's the word. The inversion of the pronoun and the verb. Okay, so how would it be if you came in at tea with me? Thank you very much, Mr. Tomnus, said Lucy, but I, also, I was wondering whether I ought to be getting back. And the word ought is a, another way in English of saying should, right? So debería, it would be in, in Spanish. It's only just around the corner, said the fawn, and there'll be a roaring fire and toast and sardines and cake. Well, it's very kind of you, said Lucy, but I shan't be able to stay long. If you will take my arm, daughter of Eve, said Mr. Tumnus, I shall be able to hold the umbrella over both of us. That's the way. Now off we go. And so Lucy found herself walking through the wood arm in arm with this strange creature as if they had known one another all their lives. They had not gone far before they came to a place where the ground became rough and there were rocks all about and little hills up and little hills down. At the bottom of one small valley, Mr. Tomnus turned suddenly aside as if he were going to walk straight into an unusual large rock. And to make a note about the word suddenly, the word suddenly is a adverb, es un adverbo. En español sería de repente, 
so quickly or in a very fast manner, things change, right? Uh, suddenly, so in succession, in other words, so muy enseguida, right? So it's una vez así, la, la, la siguiente vez así. So uh, things change real fast. So at the bottom of one small valley, Mr. Thomas turned suddenly, so really quickly, in other words, aside as if he were going to walk straight into an unusual large rock. But at the last moment, Lucy found he was leading her into the entrance of a cave. As soon as they were inside, she found, her she found herself blinking in the light of a wood fire. Then Mr. Atomnus stooped and took a flaming piece of wood out of the fire with a neat little pair of tongs and lit a lamp. Now we shan't be long, he said, and in in immediately put a kettle on. Lucy thought she had never been in a nicer place. It was a little dry, dr clean cave of reddish stone with a carpet of the floor, uh, sorry, with a carpet on the floor and two little chairs. One for me and one for a friend, said Mr. Tomnus. And a table with a dresser and a mantelpiece over the fire and above that a picture of an old fawn with a gray beard. And just to help you out, dresser, um, I believe in Spanish is like armario, right? This is a, something you have, um, es un mueble, right? Para poner tus vestidos. Dress, you see the word dress and dresser, right? So in Spanish, if we were to break that down, if we're looking at the word dress, it's vestido, and then you have dresser. So knowing our context clues from English, we know that the suffix, uh, er, la terminación er, e, er, is something that does it, right? Or a person sometimes that does that object, right? In this case, it's dress. So, vesti, uh, be, well, vest, vestidador, right? Vestidador. Um, and I don't know if that means something in Spanish, but it may, right? Vestidador. I think it does, actually. But regardless, um, the word properly translated would be armario. Um, and, but you can see something that puts dresses or uses dresses, uh, maybe, in this case, since it's an inanimate object, it's a furniture piece, so just to help you break things down right there. And a mantelpiece, a mantelpiece, um, just know like a mantle is something that goes over something in English, a mantle, um, and there's various different meanings for the word mantle, but mantelpiece in this case is something that goes over the fire. So it's a mantelpiece. It goes over the, the fire or the, the furnace, um, whatever that uh, m may be like. It could be a, an orno, it could be like a furnace in, in a uh, in, in the kitchen, or it could be a, a fireplace, right? Somewhere where they have fire, right? Um, inside, you can imagine what that could look like. Mantelpiece will go over it. And you can tell it's used to hold things, because in this case, it says uh, a mantelpiece over the fire, and above that, a picture of an old fawn with a gray beard. So, it's something is held on top. In one corner, there was a door which Lucy thought must lead to Mr. Tomnus's bedroom and on one wall was a shelf full of books. Lucy looked at these while he was setting out the tea things. They had titles like The Life and Letters of Silenus, or Nymphs and Their Ways, or Men, Monks, and Gamekeepers, A Study in Popular Legend, or Is Man a Myth? It's kind of interesting, right? Because man in Narnia, man hasn't been there for many years, so in this world, people are already starting to question if man exists, right? Um, so when humanity doesn't experience something for very long, quickly we can soon forget and even doubt its existence. Si en la humanidad, en la historia, no tenemos algo por mucho tiempo. Hace mucho tiempo que algo ha pasado uh, como una humanidad, una sociedad, hemos experimentado algo. Es muy fácil que de, de pronto si, eh, comenzamos a olvidar o y, a un dudar la existencia o la, la verdad de algo. En este caso, es eh, humanos, lo, los hombres. Porque la, la pregunta, pues, eh, el título de este, este libro es eh, si hombre es un mito. Eh, es hombre un mito. Es, es una pregunta en un título. Eh? Eh, so, very interesting. Uh, just keep that in mind. Now, daughter of Eve, said the fawn. And really, it was a wonderful tea. There was a nice brown egg, slightly boiled, uh, for each of them, 
and their sardines on toast, and they buttered toast, and then toast with honey, and then a sugar-topped cake. And when Lucy was tired of eating, the fawn began to talk. He had wonderful tales to tell of life in the forest. He told about the midnight dances and how the nymphs who lived in the wells and the dryads, these are mythical creatures, right? So keep that in mind. And the dryads who lived in the trees came out to dance at the fawns. About long hunting parties after the milk white stag who could give you wish, uh, who could give you wishes if you caught him. About feasting and treasure seeking with the wild red dwarfs in the deep mines and caverns far beneath the forest floor. And then about summer, when the woods were green and old, Silenus on his fat donkey would come to visit them, and sometimes Bacchus himself, and then the streams would run with wine instead of water, and the whole forest would give itself up to jollification for weeks on end. Jollification is a big word, you can kind of break it down, jolly, right? So jolly is como gozoso, or algo con mucho gozo, um, jollification, so the making of happiness or joy, right? So you can kind of break that down a little bit. It's a hard word, but really, once you break it down, it's pretty simple. Not that it isn't always winter now, he added gloomily. Gloomly is similar to an earlier word we saw, melancholy, so gloomly. Gloom is uh, like, you can, gloom literally is dark or like uh, obscure, right? So things that are gray. Um, and so gloom, when they make it an attitude, right? So something that people portray is uh, a characteristic. Gloom would be like sad um, in English, right? And so now it's an adverb, right? So he added gloomly. So the way he added this, this sentence, not that it isn't always winter now, um, it's in a sad and gray tone. Then to cheer himself up, he took out from its case on the dresser a strange little flute that looked as if it were made of straw and began to play. And if you recall the uh, Disney version adaptation uh, uh, of a film for this movie, of, uh, of this book, uh, the film version, Disney version of this, uh, of this uh, book, um, it has this scene, right? And he plays it on the flute, a uh, particular tune. Of course, um, that was a, um, a, a, that was a creative license on part of the, of the uh, production over there at Disney and they had someone um, manufacture a tune. We don't really know. C.S. Lewis didn't write music for this. As far as I know, I don't think he did, but um, yeah. Uh, I did find it once online, the, the, um, the Disney v uh, soundtrack for that, and I played it on the flute, and it sounds quite fun. Uh, if you ever want to hear it, you could put it in the comment section, so maybe we'll share it one of these days. That'll be fun. So if we get enough views, if we get, what should be our goal? 100 views? If we get 100 views, if we get 100 views on this video, then I will share with you all uh, the, the Disney version of, the, of, of Tomnus's uh, Narnian Lullaby. So I'll share that with you. It, played by yours truly, Peter Williams Garcia. So I will be here. We'll play it for you. It'll be great. But you have to watch it 100 times. So get out there and share it with your friends, and we'll watch it. So picking up where we left off. And the tune he played made Lucy want to cry and laugh and dance and go to sleep all at the same time. It must have been hours later when she shook herself and said, um, before we go on, uh, it's kind of interesting just to look at this poetically, what C.S. Lewis is doing here. So, so pay attention to the words that he's using. Um, he's setting up what's called a dichotomy or a binary um, rhythm in a way, right? So to cry and laugh and dance and to go to sleep. So in Spanish, right? Reír, no, sorry, <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, llor, uh, llor, llorar y reír, y bailar y, y acostarse, o, 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 o dormirse, right? So you have these, these um, you can see it's, it's a pattern of being one thing and the other. So cry and laugh are opposites, son opuestos, and you have dance and go to sleep. Energy, being happy and being energetic, and going to sleep, um, and being tired, right, and going to sleep. So that's interesting, so just something to look at, right? It must have been hours later when she shook herself and said, Oh, Mr. Tomnus, I'm so sorry to stop you, and I do love that tune, but really, I must go home. I only meant to stay for a few minutes. It's no good now, you know, said the fawn, laying down its flute and shaking its head at her very sorrowfully. And here we see another synonym of melancholy, 
gloomily, right? Sorrowfully. Sorrow in English is 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 is, is great. Um, sadness, right? So so you have pain, emotional pain, sorrow, right? It's sadness. It's a synonym of sadness, right? So in Spanish, uh, sorrow could be like tristeza, or it could be. Um, uh, there's, there's other words I'm sure like. Um, What's that one word? Himotear, right? So uh, all, the, all those are good synonyms, right? So no good, said Lucy. And here we see a question. And this is pure inflection again. So there's no, nothing in the sentence that is indicating it's a question. It's just the way she says it. La, la manera que, que lo dice Lucy en esta parte. No good, right? So there's inflection. Un tono, una inflexión. No good, said Lucy, jumping up and feeling rather frightened. What do you mean? And here you see inflection, yes. You see um, uh, uh, inversion, do you, instead of you, do. Um, and what, what, of course, is a uh, question word to add meaning to this question, right? Um, also, you'll see that, sorry, uh, I, 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 there, there is uh, inflection, do you, sorry, inversion, do you. There's change, un, un cambio, intercambio de, de, de palabras. You and do are switched, where they usually would be. You do, do you, now it's do you, um, but it's the word do, right? So that's actually not like what she's trying, uh, she's trying to ask, right? So in Spanish it's hacer, right? Um, but you wouldn't translate it that way because in English we use the word do as a helping verb uh, to ask questions, uh, as we talked about in the beginning. So mean is what she's trying to mean, right? Significar, or quieres decir, right? She's saying, ¿qué quieres decir, right? What do you mean, right? Um, so what do you mean, right? So do you mean? The word that she's asking is mean or significar, right? So, or querer decir. So what do you mean, right? So just keep that in mind. It's not do, right? If you translate that, it's hacer, right? So que, que haces, right? So, but that's not what she's trying to ask. We use the word do, or in Spanish hacer, to uh, set up a question, right? So it's a, not all verbs use it though, but a good majority do. When a majority that the the verbos en inglés usan es, es a, este verbo auxiliar para formar uh, cuestiones o preguntas. Um, yeah, so just keep in mind. No todos los verbos lo requieren, pero una mayoría de verbos lo requieren para hacerlo en la oración, hacer la oración, una pregunta, una cuestión. All right, moving on. What do you mean? I've got to go home at once. The others will be wondering what has happened to me. But a moment later, she asked, Mr. Tomnis, whatever is the matter? And whatever is one of those like extra question words we looked at earlier. Uh, we didn't, sorry, we didn't see it, but we saw the word what. So just like whatever, right? So you can tell it's a question word because it's what is, is, is the base of that word. Ever, it's just like, added to it. Um, I don't really want to get into that now, but yeah. So you get the idea, right? So whatever is the matter. So what possibly could be the, the matter? What on earth could be the matter? So those are all different ways of saying it. For the fawn's brown eyes, were filled with tears, and then the tears began to trickle down his cheeks, and soon they were running off the edge of his nose. And at last it covered its, fa its face with its hands and began to howl. And howl, literally, right, it's like a, it's animalistic in a way. It's un característica de un animal, howl, right? Um, it could be like rugir, uh, you know, some, like rugir or... Or, um, hay otras palabras, perdón, para, eh, para eso, pero no me recuerdo ahora. Um, uh, so, how it was para un animal. Pero, pero, en literatura lo podemos usar para describir a unos, pues, eh, un, un, unas, eh, eh, pues, eh, eh, alguien que está llorando, pero de un, una manera, pues, muy, muy fuerte, podemos decir, en este caso, right? How. So, he's howling, right? He howls. Um, it's not like he's an animal, right? Uh, I mean, kind of is, he's a fawn, but yeah, so you see the, it, how it's used there. It's used to say he's crying, he's wailing, he's, uh, he's grieving, right? All right, so let's move on. Mr. Tomnus, Mr. Tomnus, said Lucy in great distress. Don't, don't. What is the matter? Aren't you well? So you see uh, inversion, right, there? Aren't you well? Are you, uh, are not you well, right? You notice we don't say do there, right? We can't say do. Because it's the, the verb to be. Es el verbo ser. Y el verbo ser en, espa, en inglés, perdón, no puede usar eh, do como un verbo auxiliario, cuando eh, auxiliar para hacer una pregunta o, o una cuestión. Right, so what is the matter? 
aren't you well? So you see what is the matter? Aren't you well? What is the matter? It has the um, it actually has inversion as well because is the matter right? The matter is you're switching the subject and the and the uh, verb. Dear Mr. Tomnus, do tell me what is wrong. But the fawn continued sobbing. Thank you. As if its heart would break. And even when Lucy would went over and put her arms around him and lent him her handkerchief, he did not stop. He merely took the handkerchief and kept on using it, wringing it out with both hands whenever it got too wet to be any more use, so that presently Lucy was standing in a damp, uh, a damp patch. And the word sob, we saw that in the beginning of this section, sobbing, uh, sob is, is just to cry, right? But just cry strongly, you could say. Or even softly, it depends on how it's used, I guess. Uh, but sob, it's synonym for cry. Mr. Tomnus bawled Lucy in his ear, shaking him. Do stop, do stop it at once. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A great big fawn like you, what on earth are you crying about? Oh, 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 sobbed Mr. Tomnus. I'm crying because I'm such a bad fawn. I don't think you're a bad fawn at all, said Lucy. I think you are a very good fawn. You are the nicest fawn I've ever met. Oh, oh, you wouldn't say that if you knew, replied Mr. Tomnus s between his sobs. So this is the word sob again, right? In this case, it's a, it's a noun. So you can use as a noun sobbing. It's very easy in English sometimes to make nouns and, and verbs, like to, to switch them and to change the way they're used. In this case, the, the root word, like right, sob, it's cry, right? Uh, so you could, you could use that in this case as a verb or as a, as a noun, depending on the way you, you write it. No, I'm a bad fawn. I don't suppose there ever was a worse fawn since the beginning of the world. But what have you done? Asked Lucy. In this case, the word do, right? It's used here as a past preterite. You have the word done. But of course, this time, it is what she's asking. It's not, um, it's not uh, uh, the word do um, is not being used as a, uh, a helping verb. Um, this is in the, is in the, in the form of a um, of a uh, perfect past sentence, right? But as a question. Like I said, perfect past can often be used to ask questions about people. What have you done? Of course, the context of past perfect still applies and the fact that it happened in the past, but at an ambiguous time. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so, but what have you done? Sorry, but what, yeah, but what have you done, right? So you have past perfect uses a question. Like I said, very common. Asked Lucy. And I think we have a question out there. How old uh, is aullar or aullido in Spanish? Thank you. Yeah, I said rugir. Rugir is more like to roar. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, and we also have tea. I do encourage you to drink tea when you're reading. It's very soothing. Uh, we did this on purpose because it's very English. Is this tea? Oh, no, it's not tea. I'm sorry. It's coffee. But that's the same thing. I know C.S. Lewis wouldn't approve. It's American tea. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. So for all those ardent C.S. Lewis fans, if he was around, just let him know we are fulfilling his legacy, but we're doing it in a very American way. Instead of drinking tea, we're drinking coffee. So thank you, Marcos, for getting that set up for us. <laughs> awesome. All right, let's move on. All right. My old father now, said Mr. Tomnus. That's his picture over the mantelpiece. We saw a mantelpiece before, right? So it's over the fire, basically, right? He would never have done a thing like this. And here you see um, conditional and, and the word have and the word done, right? So he would never have done, would have done, right? So have being and never, of course, makes it negative, right? Um, have uh, done, this makes it perfect past. Like, but this time it's not a question. So I'm just emphasizing that perfect past, sorry, uh, perfect present, rather, um, is not in any way always a question, um, but it's very often used in questions because it's, uh, yeah, but anyways, we, we've looked at that before. I just want to make that note. A thing like what, said Lucy. And in this case, the word what is definitely indicating that it's a question, right? Because otherwise, a thing like what, it's very hard to make that not a question. This can't really be a statement, right? So that is a question. A thing like what, said Lucy. Like what I've done. And so in this case, you have the word what's again, but this time you have um, 
more to the question, right? You have, it's, it's done, it's written rather in a past perfect manner again, right? So I have done. So you did it at some point in the past, right? We don't know when, sometime before that moment that he said it. Said the fawn, Take, taken service under the white witch. That's what I am. I'm in the pay of the white witch. The white witch, who is she? So just to point this out, in the pay of is just another, you can kind of tell, it's not in el pago de, uh, in Spanish you would directly translate it that way. But in English we're saying, in the pay of, is like in the service of, he said that before, right? In el servicio de, uh, taking service under the white witch, that's what I am. I'm in the pay of the white witch. So basically, he is um, being paid by the white witch, right? So he is, she hired him, contracted him to do something. Um, that's basically what that's, that means, the sentence, right? The white witch, who is she? Why, it is she that has got all Narnia under her thumb. It's she that makes it always winter, always winter and never Christmas. Think of that. How awful, said Lucy. But what does she pay f you for? That's the worst of it, said Mr. Thomas with a deep groan. I'm a kidnapper for her. That's what I am. Look at me, daughter of Eve. And this is great. All right, this is a one big question just, just for you guys, okay? Would you believe that I'm the sort of fawn to meet a poor, innocent child in the wood, one that had never done me any harm, and pretend to be friendly with it, and invite it home to my cave, all for the sake of lulling it asleep, and then handling it over to the White Witch? So there you see a lot of different things happening, right? It's a, what you would say a, a run-on sentence. You have would you in the beginning, so already you can tell it's going to be a question, because would you. Would you, it's an inversion, it's una inversión, un cambio. Would you, right? So off the bat, would you believe, right? So it's an inversion, conditional, also would you, right? So you would, still conditional, but now we've switched, it's a, it's a question. Believe is the verb that we're looking at, the action verb. Um, that I'm the sort of font, right? So, and he goes on. One that had never, one that had never done, they have the, the perfect past, right? And pretend to be, and, and so forth and so forth. So. That's just a long question, right? I just wanted to point that out to you guys. All right. No, said Lucy. I'm sure you wouldn't do anything of the sort. But I have, said the fawn. Um, also, know about that. But I have, right? So in English, when we have past perfect, just like you have past perfect in Spanish, right? So in past perfect, you're using the, the, the formula, haber plus, uh, más el verbo, right? So in English, we have uh, to have plus the, the verb. Um, in English, we can actually drop the verb of the sentence, or the, the actual verb that we're talking about, uh, that's in the infinitive form. We can drop it if we're responding to something, right? So, um, so uh, he's asking, right, would you believe, uh, et cetera, et cetera, go back to that sentence, is one that had never done me any harm, right? So you have the word had, which is the past part of have, um, and so forth. Um, and she says, I'm sure you wouldn't do anything of the sort, but I have. The verb that, that's kind of hidden there, right, it, it got dropped from the sentence because it's not necessary, is do, right? Because you wouldn't do anything of the sort, but I have. In other words, I have done it. I have done this thing of this sort, right, that she's talking about. So I have, right? But you can drop the done because in the last sentence, in, in Lucy's reply, she already said it. So in English for us, we're thinking you can just drop it because it's already implied. It's not implicado. No lo tienes que decir dos veces, right? In Spanish, however, grammatically, you have to have it, right? So if I were to translate this, so yo lo traduzco, yo diría, so, uh, no lo harías, y él dice, um, pero lo he hecho, right? That's the form of the sentence. I have to say, um, I could say yo hice, yo lo hice, but uh, the, the form that, that they use, right, is yo lo he hecho. No puedo decir en español, yo lo he. Right? Sin, el, sin el verbo para comple completarlo. Yo lo he hecho. Es necesario. En, es, en inglés, cuando alguien antes, antes lo ha usado, este verbo lo ha usado, no tienes que repetir este verbo. Right? So, to, re to review, para revisar. Um, you have done it. I have. Right? 
I drop done. I have done it. Done it is not necessary. No es necesario porque en la en, 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 en perdón la oración antes eh, anterior ya lo ya lo fue usado ya está implicado. Okay, that that's the, what's happening here in this in this in this thing. But I have said the fawn. Well, said Lucy rather slowly, for she wanted to be truthful and yet not be too hard on him. Well, that was pretty bad, but you were, you were, right, so apostrophe, you were, you are, so sorry for it that I'm sure you will never do it again. Daughter of Eve, don't you understand? And here you have do, right, so do not, you understand, in other words, we put it together, don't, do not, right, don't you understand? Said the fawn, it isn't something I have done. I'm doing it now, this very moment. What do you mean? Cried Lucy, turning very white. You are the child, said Thomas. I have orders from the white witch that if I ever saw a son of Adam or a daughter of Eve in the wood, I was to catch them and hand them over to her. And you are the first I ever met, and I've pretended to be your friend and asked you to tea, and all the time I've been meaning to wait till you were asleep and then go and tell her. Oh, but you won't, Mr. Thomas, said Lucy. You won't, will you? Indeed, indeed, you really mustn't. And if I don't, he said he, beginning to cry again, she's sure to find out, and she'll have my tail cut off, and my horns sawn off, and my beard plucked out, and she'll wave her wand over my beautiful, beautiful, cloven hu hooves and turn them into horrid solid hooves like a wretched horse's. You could tell he has animosity for the horses, right? And if she is extra and specially angry, she'll turn me into stone and I shall be only a statue of a fawn in her horrible house until the four thrones of Ker Paravel are filled. And goodness knows when that will happen or whether it will ever happen at all. I'm very sorry, Mr. Tumnus, said Lucy, but please let me go home. Of course I will, said the fawn. Of course I've got to. I see that now. I hadn't known what humans would like before I met you. Of course I can't give you up to the white witch. Not now that I know you. But we must be off at once. I'll see you back to the lamp post. I suppose you can find your way. Y y sorry. But I suppose you can find your own way from there back to spare oon and wardrobe. I'm sure I can, said Lucy. We must go as quietly as we can, said Mr. Tumnus. The whole wood is full of her spies. Even some of the trees are on her side. They both got up and left the tea things on the table. And Mr. Tumnus once more put on his umbrella and gave Lucy his arm and they went out into the snow. The journey back was not at all like the journey to the fawn's cave. They stole along as quickly as they could without speaking a word and Mr. Tumnus kept to the darkest places. Lucy was relieved when they reached the lamp post again. Do you know your way from here, daughter of Eve? said Tumnus. Lucy looked very hard between the trees and could just see in the distance a patch of light that looked like daylight. Yes, she said, I can see the wardrobe, the wardrobe door. Then be off home as quick as you can, said the fawn, and can you ever forgive me for what I meant to do? Why, of course I can, said Lucy, shaking him heartily by the hand. And I do hope you won't get into dreadful trouble on my account. And a quick note, on my account is like, uh, for like by my fault, right? So por mi culpa, right? So it's my doing, right? I don't. I hope that you don't get in trouble. Perhaps I may keep the handkerchief. Rather, said Lucy, and they ran, and then ran toward the far off patch of daylight as quickly as her legs would carry her, and presently, instead of rough branches brushing past her as uh, past her she felt coats and instead of crunching snow under her feet she felt wooden boards 
and all at once she found herself jumping out of the wardrobe into the same empty room from which the whole adventure had started. It was still raining and she could hear the voices of the others in the passage. I'm here, she shouted. I'm here. I've come back. I'm all right. And that's how we conclude chapter two. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we're very excited to continue this series, drinking our American tea, AKA coffee. Uh, uh, join us next week. Again, we are learning as we go, uh, like anything. So please leave your comments, um, reach out to me with your comments, your questions, anything you have. Uh, I hope to see you next week. Uh, God bless you. We'll see you in chapter three.